on the black tank still says it's a third full. It does? I just dumped it. Maybe something's stuck on the sensor. It's probably time to flush it out again. Hi, everybody. Mike from RVBlogger.com here. You get Mike in front of the camera, Susan behind the camera, and here we are today talking about how to clean your black water tank and your black water tank sensors. Now, there's a difference between rinsing your black water tank after every use and actually cleaning your black water tank. We try to rinse our black water tank every time we dump if we can. And the reason we do that is just to help keep everything clean, uh, working properly, and we don't build up any debris that way inside the black water tank either. But every now and then, you do need to perform some, we'll call it routine maintenance, and go a little further and actually clean your black water tank and its sensors. And we found there are really three different ways that you can use to accomplish this. The first way to do it is after you've rinsed your black water tank, you've dumped it and you've rinsed it, the next thing you could do is go ahead and put some old fashioned dishwashing detergent into your black water tank along with some ice cubes and about a half a tank of water. And what'll happen there is the ice cubes bang around all inside the black water tank. After you put all these in, you have to go for a drive. The ice cubes will bounce all around inside of your black water tank. The dishwashing detergent helps to clean it. And then uh, after a couple hours when all the ice cubes are melted, you can go ahead and drain your black water tank and then flush it again. Uh, but that's a really, really great method. Now, one bit of warning is you don't want to use like Dawn dishwash soap because this will bubble up all over the place. You need to use dishwasher detergent, which you can use either the powder form or the liquid form. It doesn't matter, but it needs to be for a dishwasher so you don't get bubbles everywhere. We recently had a episode at home where Susan's daughter used this in the dishwasher and we got bubbles everywhere. So it's pretty funny. Anyway, that's method number one. The second thing you can also do is use the old fashioned black tank wand. And you would hook this up to a garden hose and then you'd have to drag this through the RV to get it to the bathroom. And then this goes down the toilet and water sprays out the end of this. And that sideways spray is what sprays the inside walls of your black tank and cleans it. Uh, we used to have to do this. We really don't like doing this at all. Susan hates dragging a hose through the RV or we have to use our dinette window to get the hose in and then drag it around to the bathroom. We don't have a window in our bathroom that operates that we could pull the hose into. So we have to drag it all the way through, which is no fun. But we found a new product now that works even better. And that's the Rhino Blaster. And we love this product. Um, we hook this up to our septic. There's a hose that runs into here. So you can literally from outside the RV, shoot water up into the black tank of the RV, flood it, and then release it and, and it'll go into the septic system. The important thing with this is to make sure you buy the one that has the gate valve. If you don't have a gate valve, you're gonna be filling up your black water tank and if this isn't closed, all the water you're squirting in is just going to run out at the same exact time. We'll show you more about that when we get it hooked up. But this is the one that you want. You want to use the one that has the gate valve. We love it. We think it's a fantastic product. I'm sure you'll love it too. And you don't have to worry about dragging this wand and dripping it and all that stuff inside your RV. The third and final way to clean out your black water tank and, and sensors is actually to really sanitize them with just good old Clorox bleach. And so you would fill your black tank, again, about a half or two thirds of the way, pour in about a half a cup of bleach, go drive around, let that bleachy water slosh all over the place. But when you use the Clorox bleach method, you can't let that solution sit in your black tank for any time. As soon as you're done driving around, you need to go ahead and dump that chlorine water out. And then you need to fill the tank immediately full of clean, fresh water or, you know, clean water. 
and uh, rinse all that chlorine out of there. In fact, I'd, su I'd suggest rinsing it twice. The reason for that is that the rubber gaskets and seals that are in the plumbing system of your black water tank system uh, do not like chlorine. Chlorine will make the rubber warp over time and then it'll begin to leak. So although we like to use the chlorine to sanitize and get rid of all the bacteria inside the black tank, which by the way, keeps it from smelling bad, um, you do have to rinse it out immediately. That is the one caveat you have to be aware of. So now that we know the three different methods that we use to clean our black tank and sensors, let's go ahead and give it a try. Okay, so now we're inside the RV and we're getting ready to go ahead and dump the ice cubes and the dishwashing detergent down the toilet to let that agitate the inside of the black tank while we take a drive and uh, clean out the black tank that way. However, before I get started, I do want to talk about your black tank sensors a little bit. Uh, if you remember in the very beginning of the video, Suze, I dumped the tanks. Susan came in and checked and said that we were still at one third full in the black tank and I knew it was empty. And so that is a situation where there is something on the one third full sensor that's keeping it wet, which keeps the electrical connection in play, which makes the light light up to say that the tank is one third full. Um, so the way your sensors work in your black tank is it's the water that, that completes the electrical connection when it touches the actual sensor inside the tank and that's what makes all your lights light up. So what can happen is you might know that your tank is empty, but you might have the two third, one third or the two third light on and you'll know there's probably something hung up inside your tank on one of the sensors. And so you'll know it's time to at least flush it. But if you haven't cleaned it in a long time, it's probably time to go ahead and give your tank a good cleaning. Um, we recommend it. you do it. Um, you flush your tank every time you use it, if you can, every time you dump. But uh, for cleaning purposes, you know, it just depends how often you RV. If you're using your RV all the time, you probably need to clean it more often. Um, or if you're, if you're going to park your RV for a long time, you want to clean it right before you let your RV sit. Like if you're going to winterize it or something along those lines, um, good idea to go ahead and clean it before you let it sit for a long period of time. So anyway, let's go ahead and dump our ice down the toilet and get our uh, dishwashing detergent in there as well. And then we'll go ahead and take a drive. We recommend you use about a half a cup of liquid or powdered dishwashing detergent. And our tank is about uh, just under 40 gallons. I think it's like 36. So a half a cup seems to be a good amount to use for that size black tank. Just pour it right down the toilet. And then you can go ahead and let your ice fly. Might have to do it a little bit at a time. That's it, pretty easy. Now we're ready to just take a short drive let all that bounce around inside the black tank. It'll take care of anything that uh, sort of accumulates over time and loosen it up, and then we can come back and flush it all out. Okay, so we're back from our drive around the campground where we let our dishwashing detergent and ice cubes slosh all around the black tank and hopefully get that nice and clean. So we're ready to drain our black tank out now and get all of that soapy water out of there. There she goes. So that takes care of step one of our three steps of cleaning out your black tank and black tank sensors. Step two would be to use the cleaning wand. 
And like I mentioned earlier in the video, we don't really like to do that. We don't, we don't want to have to attach a garden hose to the wand, drag it through a window, drag it through the RV, stick it down the toilet. And so that's what we used to have to do. But then we found a great new product called the Rhino Blaster. And the Rhino Blaster saves us from all of that hassle. We don't have to drag a hose through the RV. We don't have to sit inside the RV and hold the toilet lever open to get water to fill the black tank. All we have to do now is attach the Rhino Blaster, hook a garden hose up to it. We leave the black tank open. We close this gate valve. And now what's gonna happen is this water shoots up into the black tank and it'll fill the black tank without us having to go inside and do anything. Except maybe check a sensor. Or I should say check our black tank readings to see how full the tank is. This is great. You can see how much the water is sloshing around. This is shooting right up into the black tank. And um, not only is this great to use when we are cleaning our tanks, but we use this to flush our tanks as well. So if anytime we dump our black, our black tank, if there's a hose at the dump station or a hose at our campsite, we'll go ahead and hook it up and we will flush the black tank as often as we possibly can. But during this cleaning phase, it's also really handy. Now, one other thing I wanted to point out about the Rhino Blaster is this gate valve. This gate valve is here, and currently it's in the closed position. So while I'm shooting water into the black tank, the black tank has to be open so water can go into it, but this valve has to be closed. Otherwise, if it was just open, water would drain out of the black tank as fast as I can squirt it in there. Now, RhinoFlex does sell another Rhino Blaster, but it doesn't have this gate valve on it for some reason. It's cheaper, it is less expensive, but it will not work the same. So I highly recommend if you're gonna buy this product, and I highly recommend you do, you buy the one that has the gate valve. One other thing you'll notice in all of our videos is I'm always wearing these orange gloves when I'm doing any work on the sewer. These are, or septic, these are the best rubber gloves I've ever used. Normally they're real, Thin and they tear easy or they puncture. These things are great and they have a little diamond grid pattern on them so I can grip things like slippery plastic fittings really easy. I mean, they're terrific. So anyway, we have links to all that stuff in the description down below if you're interested, but these products work really, really well for us. So I think we've got enough water in the black tank now that we could uh, go ahead and let her rip and let this all drain out of here. So the first thing I'll do is just turn off the water supply and then open the gate valve and just flush that black tank. You'll also notice with all of our RhinoFlex setup, we always buy the clear elbows on either end of our hose just helps us to know that everything's clean and flushed out the way it should be. The last and final step in the process now would be to go ahead and fill the tank again, take about a half a cup of Clorox bleach, dump that in through the toilet, um, have about a half a tank of water, again, drive around with that chlorine bleach water solution and let that slosh all around your black tank. That'll help kill any bacteria that may be growing in there and the bacteria is really what creates most of the odor that you would smell from your black tank. Um, and then after you're done that, drain it all out again. And then it's critical that after you use that chlorine solution, you rinse your tank thoroughly once or even twice. Fill it up as far as you can and get all of that chlorine out of there because the chlorine will cause all of the rubber fittings and gaskets all throughout your plumbing system in your black tank to warp over time and then they'll begin to leak and nobody wants to have that problem. So a couple of other additional tips are 
Um, should you use uh, chemicals in your toilet? And yes, we highly recommend you do. Um, we actually use AquaChem in ours. We think it's a fantastic product. Um, it helps to kill bacteria, which also eliminates odors, but it also helps to break down any of the solid waste material and toilet paper in the black tank so that it doesn't accumulate or create a clog in there and everything flows out very, very easily. And another question we get asked quite a bit is, do I have to use special toilet paper for RVs? And the answer is yes, you should. Um, that special toilet paper is made to break down more quickly than the toilet paper that you would use at home. So you can bring your toilet paper from home and use it in your bathroom in your RV, but I don't recommend it. Um, it's not meant to break down very fast. It's probably gonna create a clog. It could get hung up on the sensors and create false readings on your, on your panel inside your RV. So you'll think you may be full when you're not, or you think your tank will be fuller than it is when it's less full. Um, so we highly recommend using uh, toilet paper used for RVs, or made for RVs. And we also use the AquaChem version of that as well. We think it's fantastic. Never had any problems with it. Seems to be comfortable enough for us, uh, soft enough for us, and uh, it does the trick. So if you follow these tips, you'll be able to keep your black water tank in great operating condition. You'll be able to maintain it and make sure that your black tank and its sensors don't have any problems at all. And by the way, if you like the products that we used to make the video and help to clean out our tank and everything, we have links to those in the descriptions down below. Full disclosure, they are affiliate links. So if you click on them, we make a couple pennies. It helps to keep the blog going and it helps us to make YouTube videos and we really, really appreciate you using our links. We really, really do. Anyway, if you found the video to be informative, please subscribe to the channel. We'd love to have you subscribe. And please also check out our other videos on YouTube when you have a chance. And finally, be sure to catch us on rvblogger.com. So for Mike and Susan, see you next time. That was horrible, you're so hard on me. Get it right, talent. <sighs> la 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 la